Hopefully another example also will make this clear about how to think through a process like this before doing any calculation. So what's the limiting value as x goes to negative infinity of this expression here? So again, I'm going to do I'm going to do a bit of a thinking first. And here my thoughts are, what happens when x is huge? What is going on when x is huge? When x is huge, that thing in the numerator and that thing in the denominator are roughly what? Well, the thing in the numerator, when x is huge, the only thing that matters is the x squared, right? If x is a million, 3 times a million squared minus 5? Oh, you're subtracting 5 from a million squared times 3? It's negligible. It doesn't make much of a difference. Then you square root it and subtract 1? Oh, that doesn't make much of a difference either. This thing is roughly just the square root of x squared, or 3x squared. What about the bottom? 2 times a really big number plus 5? It doesn't really matter about that plus 5. This thing is roughly the size of 2x. Now, the top is the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. What's the square root of x squared? Well, that's just the absolute value of x. And on the bottom, we have this 2x. OK, so now I've got an absolute value of x divided by x. And now, I'm thinking x is huge. I really want to think x is you know, heading towards negative infinity, so x is a negative number. If x is a negative number, what is the absolute value of x? Well, the absolute value of x is really just the same thing as negative x. That's all, 2 over x. And um, we'll write, I'll write it down again why uh, in a second, but I'm, again, I'm just thinking here, so I'm just sort of doing this roughly. Absolute value of x, if x is a negative number, then it's the same thing as negative x. In other words, what's the absolute value of negative 2? Well, that's 2, but that can also be written as negative, negative 2. Okay, so I've got negative x and x. I can cancel those x's off, and I get an answer of negative root 3 over 2. So there's my thought. Just a, a rough thought, really not, uh, there wasn't, okay, you may say I did some calculations because I wrote some stuff down, but there's really nothing here that couldn't have been done in, in my head. In fact, this, I, I do this in my head. Um, but I'm just showing you what the thought process is in my head. So I can get the answer without really doing much in the way of calculation at all. Um, and it's important to know that for a lot of these limits at infinity, you can do this. But you've got to back it up. You've got to back it up with some calculations. So this is for you. What's in green here is really for you and just to how to think about these things. What's in blue here is how to convince the person reading your work that you've done the calculation correctly. So we're going the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this expression here. And I'm going to play the same game I did in the last example. I'm going to try to push all the x's into the denominators of corresponding pieces. So I'm going to factor out an x squared from underneath the square root sign. So if I factor out an x squared from under the square root sign, maybe I'll do it in a couple of steps here just to make it clear. 3 minus 5 over x squared minus 1 all over, and I'm going to factor out an x from everything in the bottom. Okay, so now I'm almost done with that factoring out the x squared. Right now I can distribute the square root sign over the x squared, so I get a square root of x squared. Square root of x squared, that's the same thing as absolute value of x. Then I've got a square root of 3 minus 5 over x squared. And then I've got a minus 1. And then I've got a x, 2 plus 5 over x. And now with that absolute value of x, I can replace the absolute value of x with just a negative x. And the reason is, I'll finish writing this down, x2 plus 5 over x, since absolute value of x is negative x for x less than 0. When x is negative, the absolute value of x is equivalent to just taking negative of the x value. Now I can cancel off the x's. Oh, almost. I can cancel off the x's once I factor it out of both pieces in the top. So I factor out an x. I get a negative square root of 3 minus 5 over x squared minus 1 over x 
So I'm factoring the x out of both pieces in the top. That pushes an x into the denominator of that 1. I've got an x and a 2 plus 5 over x. Now I cancel those, and now I look at the limit. As x goes to negative infinity, as x gets really, really big, in the negative in this case, well, everywhere an x appears in the rest of my expressions, it's always on the bottom of that corresponding term. 5 over x squared, 1 over x, 5 over x. Those are all going to go to 0. So this is going to go to 0, this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 0. So what's left is just a negative square root of 3 over 2. There's our answer. Notice it agreed with our thought process above. Okay, so that's the idea with uh, uh, these limits involving infinity. You're going to try to manipulate the expression so that everywhere you see an x, it's sitting downstairs in the expression. Or, uh, that's not always the goal, um, perhaps the expression involves an exponential function or an arctangent, again, and then you're going to have to use properties of those individual functions. But here, we're looking mostly at rational and algebraic uh, functions involving square roots and whatnot. Then I'm going to try to put the x's downstairs.